Hello, I am John Martin. This is a continuing video on the research leading to the detection and characterization of stealth adapted viruses. The project began as a search for human herpes virus 6 in patients with the chronic fatigue syndrome using the polymerase chain reaction. Positive PCR responses were obtained using a more broadly based PCR assay that could detect a variety of herpes viruses. We did not see such responses when the assay was restricted to only detecting human herpes virus 6. The same broadly reactive PCR assays were also positive in several patients with severe neurological and psychiatric illnesses. Having obtained a positive PCR, we could then proceed and cultured a cell damaging or cytopathic virus from a patient with the chronic fatigue syndrome and we could use the PCR technique to characterize that virus. These data were published in the American Journal of Pathology in August of 1994. This is a figure from that paper, figure 3. It shows the uh, PCR response of running the PCR on a positive viral culture. There's a striking amount of DNA in this band. We know from the size markers that it's approximately 1,500 nucleotides. We now know, since we were able to isolate that DNA, clone it in plasmid, and sequence it, that there are actually two products. One has a size of 1,484 and was cloned into a plasmid 15.52, the other slightly larger 1,539 nucleotides was cloned into plasmid 15.54. As discussed in that paper in the earlier video, the sequences that we obtained um, from of this um, two products were submitted to GenBank. Now GenBank is a public repository of all of the available DNA sequences provided uh, around the world. At the time, that first product had a sequence that had no significant matching with any sequence that was available on GenBank. The slightly larger product, however, did come back and it said that there was significant, with 58% similarity to the nucleotide sequence of a portion of the human cytomegalovirus, a type of herpes virus. The uh, matching um, was sufficiently close to suggest a cytomegalovirus origin, but not exactly human. We were able also to use these PCR products to identify the virus, which migrated and uh, banned about 20,000 nucleotides, again consisting of multiple different strands of DNA, but we could then begin to clone that. Um, the virus. At the time, there was very limited data about monkey cytomegaloviruses on GenBank. We were fortunate to clone portions of the virus that did match to both human cytomegalovirus and to the cytomegalovirus of rhesus monkeys and African green monkeys. The data, as reflected in this figure, um, were unequivocal. The virus matched far more closely to African green monkey simian cytomegalovirus. The um, monkey cytomegaloviruses have since been fully sequenced and these two larger products also match um, uh, with 93 and 95 percent um, identity of their nucleotides to African green monkey simian cytomegalovirus. So at this stage, we were clear that the virus that we were characterizing was a derivative of African green monkey simian cytomegalovirus. What I want to do in uh, this discussion, in this video, is talk about cloning a product, a smaller um, size product, from running the PCR assays on the positive cultures. We found the product and this shows the nucleotide sequence, it had 666 nucleotides. When we looked at that product, 
it really didn't appear to be viral, rather it had more of a characteristic of a cellular sequence. So too, 14 of the clones from which we had partial DNA sequencing from, from the virus, 14 of some 248, also had sequences that matched to cellular sequences. So in 1998, I was able to publish an article describing the cellular sequences in the stealth viruses. It was clear that they were part of the virus because they were present in highly purified DNA uh, from the virus itself. What we now know, because we could, um, much more DNA sequence data are available on GenBank, we could identify now where this um, uh, sequence came from. This shows that it matches to a region of the human X chromosome. What we see here in the top line is the DNA sequence of the um, clone PCR product. Underneath it is the DNA sequence of this region of the X chromosome of humans. There's one deletion here, one deletion there, and one substitution down here. But essentially, there was only three nucleotide differences between the PCR product and a region on the X chromosome. We were interested to do the comparison with the same gene as it's represented in um, chimpanzees and monkeys. What this shows, again, in the human their, uh, comparison, uh, 606 of 609 nucleotides were identical and 99% unequivocally there, um, closely matching. Slightly deviation from the chimpanzee, the rhesus, and the African green monkey. So we know it's a human gene. But I can now um, go back to that first American Journal of Pathology article. In the discussion, I included this uh, finding, or well, two findings. One, that that first type of virus, the African green monkey simian cytomegalovirus um, PCR assay, worked equally well in a virus that I had cultured from the cerebrospinal fluid of a patient who had a severe encephalopathy complicating a four-year history of a manic depressive illness. In fact, when she was first admitted to Los Angeles County Hospital, her diagnosis was that of schizophrenia. So her illness was severe, a psychotic illness. She has a virus very much related to the virus from the chronic fatigue syndrome patient. But we also had several other viral isolates that had yielded atypical PCR products using different primers. We partially sequenced those, and again, they had no relationship to the African green monkey, and some of them appeared to be more cellular in nature. We've since gone ahead and looked at the sequence of one of the um, uh, products cloned from a chronic fatigue syndrome patient, and again, in the early studies, when the first comparisons were made, it matched pretty closely, but with obviously gaps, to the human genome. But when we extended this analysis, and instead of having a comparison with the <coughs> human uh, gene sequence, we did a comparison with the sequence of the a cellular sequence of rhesus monkeys shown here, the matching was far tighter with the rhesus monkey cellular genome. There are obviously some differences, but it is statistically um, identified as a rhesus um, sequence. What we had then is, oh, this is a comparison. So again, using um, that sequence on human, it was 88%, 88.5%, chimpanzee a little bit closer, rhesus 98 um, uh, 0.82. This figure far exceeds these other figures and it was not African green monkey. So what we identified clearly that it was a, a cellular sequence from the rhesus monkey. 
We published these data in this article in 2019, referring for the first time of these sequences as renegade cellular, and I'll talk in the future video about bacterial genetic sequences in these monkey-derived stealth adaptive viruses. But we could take the studies further. We had three cultures from, obtained from chronic fatigue syndrome patients at different times. Then uh, I'll refer to them as culture A, B, and C. The one I showed you is the product from culture A, and it clearly matched to the rhesus cellular gene. From a culture B, from a different patient, but still with chronic fatigue syndrome, we had six sequenced plasmids. And one um, uh, of the six sequences, two of them, though different, match closely to the product from culture A, just showing a similarity. And even more so, we had from a third culture, seven sequences from culture C, and one of those also matched to this. So we had all together one, two, three, four sequences. They all slightly differed from one another, but were all unequivocally derived from a rhesus cellular sequence. In addition, between culture B and C, two of the PCR products, although differing from each other, did match with two different products from culture C. <clears throat> so we had the um, information that there were similarities in the cellular sequences coming from rhesus uh, monkey in the different viruses, yet the sequences were um, unstable. What we also know that the, all the six sequences from culture B were rhesus, but in the culture C, where we had seven products, four were from rhesus, and the remaining three were human. What that is leading to is a realization that in these viruses, they've incorporated these uh, rhesus cellular sequences, that they've been maintained um, in viruses infecting different individuals, suggesting there is a limited number of strains of originating stealth adaptive viruses. One that we characterize in the first chronic fatigue syndrome patient came from an African green monkey simian cytomegalovirus, the ones that were characterized in these three additional chronic fatigue patients came from a rhesus monkey. Both African green monkey and rhesus monkeys were used to produce polio vaccines. What we can also see is that the incorporated cellular sequences are genetically unstable and more interestingly, they can be exchanged with human sequences. We don't know yet that they're actually incorporated into the human genome, but that certainly is a possibility. We know that these viruses can infect animals. We've taken the first um, virus that we characterized and put it into cats who get an acute illness, and so the virus can grow between different species. What it also means is that we are incorporating cellular sequences that might have um, specific characteristics on their own. Um, I published these data in an article that's available, Stealth Adapted Viruses with Genetically Unstable Rhesus Monkey Cellular Sequences. And I note here, it could be a forerunner of complex human illnesses hugely important to establish a viral culture and sequencing facility to study these stealth adapted viruses. I've indicated here inquiries can be sent to me by email or even telephone call. Thank you very much for watching.